I'm going to tackle some sewing in an era I don't do all that often. It's kind of a mental vacation. But Historic Wagner Farm in Glenview, Illinois has asked me to do some 1920s dresses for them. But so I have five dresses. We're just going to pick one and dive in. Made my choice. I'm feeling in a green mood, so we're going to make the green dress. And here is the pattern that we're working with today. Let's see how it goes. Well, there it is, a heap of pattern pieces. Some... Okay, I'm just saying, uh, past patterns, uh, re reprint of a simplicity patterns number 159 is not for the faint of heart. It never says anything on the pattern pieces like cut on fold. And some of the directions here, I'll show you. It's just a reprint of the directions. At least that's my, that's what I'm guessing. This is just a reprint of directions from whatever the original source was. And they're very not explicit. Like, uh, like the number of times um, I just put things on folds because it's like I'm reading the directions over and over again to figure out what these pieces are for because they're not marked. And it doesn't say things like cut to or cut on fold or anything. So here's hoping that uh, I've got it. Like This little thing, and uh, the lines underneath the pockets are little pleats. So I'm assuming these dots are the placement for the pocket when we put the pocket on. Therefore, these, these thingies underneath it, this is what we're slashing to insert the pleat. Sides together gets very interesting with the fabric looking the same front and back. It means it's hard to make mistakes unless you make all the mistakes. We'll just have to be careful. Step one, they, I now have the pleats in here. What I'm gonna have to do now is fold up the extra fabric and make a little box pleat at the back side on both sides. These, of course, again, the box pleats, I'll sew them down and they will be covered by the pockets. So what I'm doing here is I've got the, ins this is the pleat, and I'm folding it in half like this, and then I'm gonna sew it down. And sewing it down, see how it's sort of half and half? Under the pocket, this, this is all won't be seen. Here's the pleat wished open. So there's one side of what, where it's inserted, and there's the other side of where it's inserted. And I folded the difference and smooshed that down and I just have to stitch that down now and then repeat it all on the other side. And now the step where I get to press everything in sight. So it doesn't look like much when it's all said and done, but there's the pleats pressed in. The directions say the last thing to do is to put the pockets on, but you know, it'll be a whole lot easier to put the pockets on now before I assemble the front to the back. So I have the pockets and I went and got into my own stash because I thought that the pockets need to have a white flap on the top instead of just being all polka dots. It's just what it needed. So now I get to, these are facing, so I'm going to sew it down and then flip it so that it's all encased and all the raw edges will be protected. All right, pockets, I have the top sewn down and then I went and I pressed under all the way along the edge here. And now I get to see how this is where the top, this is the top of the pleat. And that this is where the, how the pleat's sewn down. And we're just gonna cover over it with your pockets. And we're gonna sew the pockets into place. And here's the front of the dress. Now we can put the front to the back as the direction said and do the other stuff. It looks a lot more like a dress now. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the cuff on the sleeve. Now, I was worried when I looked at this that it looked like the pattern, the original pattern piece. If you folded it in half, great. It looked like, it had looked like it wasn't gonna be wide enough for the, to, to meet, but it looks like it's not, ugh, yeah. There's no seam allowance. It works, but there's no seam allowance. So I keep sliding it around. So 
I will um, add a little bit, but I obviously got way more extra than and I needed. And when I pinned the cuff in place on the sleeve, turns out I was really not that hyperactive. It's not that much, that's a bit of a seam, more of a seam allowance than I need, but it's a good thing I cut it longer than the pattern. This is one of those confusing times when to get the cuff on here, it's going to be right side to wrong side, and then we will flip and stitch on the outside. And this is why you gotta love sleeve arms for making sleeves. Imagine Here's that. what I was talking about, the sleeve cuff. I've now folded it out from underneath, and now I fold this over, and we're gonna stitch it down on top. And the sleeves are now done. Next up, we get to do the neckline. What I'm gonna do is stitch, like, you know, stitch the collar to the, the dress, fold it in half, and like hand sew on the inside so that it's all attached, but the bow, this whole thing about pulling the bow through, if you look at the drawing, it actually looks like it's not quite touching the dress right there. But if I do that, what is finishing the edge of the dress? I suppose I can um, hand tack that little bit there to try to replicate this more. Yeah, it's the challenge. We're gonna make something up. So I wasn't sure what piece G was, but there were two of them and I had the material. So I cut them out, sewed these two together, flipped them and made essentially made a belt because on the picture at least, there's this little narrow belt and look how they have it sort of like tying like on the back side. And this is a just about the right amount. So here's the belt, here's the dress. I just need to hem it. We're on the last step. I just need to take the bottom hem and sew on the seam binding and then press up the edge and tack it down. And there we have it. A n brand new 1920s dress. I've only got four more to go now.